Do you know that feeling? That urging feeling which tells you to go out there behind your screen and ride a dating simulator in one day? Yeah, me neither. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Alright, let's open Unreal and make a new Blueprints project. Once in the editor, we first want to add our assets, because without assets, we're not really able to make cool stuff. So I will provide the links to the resources uh, in the description. Just download them and uh, just place them just like I did. Then I'm going back to the content browser, right click, create a new folder and make a folder named Blueprints. In here, I first want to focus on creating some data. So in the blueprints folder, make a new folder called enum. Then I'm going to make two enumerations. An enumeration in general is used for states or types. And with that being said, I'm going to make an enumeration for blush, the character expression, and the response type of the dialogues. The blush enumeration is going to contain three states. A default state where the character is not blushing. A normal blush state where the character is just blushing. And that last is going to be a uh, romantic blush state, uh, whenever the character feels a little, you know, romantic. The character expression enumeration is going to contain a bunch of states for the facial expressions of the character. And we will use these expressions to later on determine in the dialogue which expression the character should be uh, doing with their face. And at last we have the response type, which just says, hey, is this, is this the character or the narrator responding? Now that we have set up some states, let's head back over to the Blueprints folder and create a new folder called Struct. A struct in Blueprints is essentially just a container for more data. And we are going to need two of those. One for the character clothing and one for the character expressions. In the character clothing, we're going to create some texture 2D references to later on link with the UI. This essentially just helps us specify this character is wearing this gloves. In the character expression struct, I'm going to create again text to d references, but this time for each facial expression of the character. Later on, we will link this data together with our enumeration state that we created earlier. And with the data out of the way, it is time to create the character. So in the blueprints, I make a new folder called widget. In there, I make a new blueprint um, of class widget. And I call it the widget blueprint character. And some people might be wondering, wait, Unreal does have a character blueprint. Why don't you use that? And that is because this tutorial is solely going to be 2D and the Character blueprint of Unreal is heavily used in 3D, with a lot of 3D components specified to it. In the character, let's first start off by creating something visual. Add a button, but this button is only going to use as a selection box, so we can disable all the rendering. Now let's add a canvas to it and set the fill to horizontal and vertical. With the canvas, we can add more components to the button than we could previously. Now let's add some images to this canvas. We're going to add an image per clothing layer for the character. This makes the character highly customizable later on. After adding the images, I'm going to select them all and put their anchor mode to fill. Then I'm gonna put all the offsets to zero. And after that, it's time to add default values to the image layers. And by doing this, I'm just saying, hey, the body texture goes with the body layer and etc. and etc. And when you've completed that, you will have something that looks like this. Which makes it time for putting the character on screen. And for this, we're going to need a new blueprint. Uh, again of type widget and I will call this one the background. In this widget I'm just gonna start with a canvas panel then going to add an image to this which serves as the actual background set the anchor to fill put off the offsets and then also put the right image in there for me that's the schoolyard and after that I'm going to add our 
splendid character in there. I just drag it somewhere on screen. Then I make sure I give it some scaling so it's actually visible to that screen. And then I'm going to add the anchor point to the section where that character is on screen. So whenever I resize the screen, the character scales with it correspondingly. And the last thing I want to do to get this character on screen is to make a level per background. This will make it easier later on to just switch the backgrounds. Let's make a new basic level. In this level, we open up the level blueprint. In here, we're going to create the background widget. And after we have created it, we're going to add it to our viewport so we can actually see it on screen. Uh, we keep our order to zero because we want all the uh, other things to be drawn on top of the background. Now that we have done that, we can actually just save this level. Now close off the blueprint and just uh, play the scene and uh, there you have it, a character on screen. And after we've done that, we're going to make the most important blueprint and that is the dialogue itself. So for this, we're going to make a new blueprint and of type data asset. Well, more precise, the primary data assets and just call it the uh, blueprint dialogue. I recommend to uh, read the documentation on data assets, but in a sense, it is a way for us to make uh, custom data in a blueprint and store that to disk. So when we make a new instance, we can just store that as an asset. And then later on, just like any other asset, we can use that to read the data from. Now let's add some data to this uh, data asset then. So we're going to make two integer variable first, uh, which is going to be specific for romance. So we first going to add a threshold. So when we are in dialogue, we can check whether it meets the threshold. Then I'm also going to add a modifier. So whenever we select this dialog, it's going to add this modifier of romance to the character's romance level. And to keep it clean, let's add these in the category of romance. Then let's continue on by actually creating the, uh, the dialog text. So this is going to be displayed whenever the dialog options are present. We are also going to need a level reference for whenever we go into a dialogue option that should transition us to a new level. However, Unreal does not allow us to specifically ask for this level reference. So what we can do is go to our character and then in the event graph, just type in the open level function. Then you see it actually provides this variable type, just promote it to a variable. And then we're going to steal this variable type and copy it over to our data asset. And there we have it. Now let's us also add these to a nice category of category dialogue. And then we are going to add some more variables. The first one is going to be our response. This serves for whenever we select an option in the dialogue, uh, this is the response we get. Then we also want a response type, thus being it a character response or narrator response. Then also I want as a variable the expression. So whenever I select the dialogue, which expression is the character going to give us? Then the same goes for the blush expression. So whenever we select the dialogue option, is this character going to blush? I also want to add an audio cue. So whenever we select the dialogue option, the character can actually verbally respond to us. I'm also going to integrate it in such a way that it's not mandatory, but an option. Now let's give these variables a nice category of type response. So we keep it all nicely and clean. Then there is one more variable that I want to make, um, and that is a dialogue. <laughs> and it's kind of ironic because the dialogue has a dialogue. But uh, I'm going to make this of type array which allows me to have multiple dialogue options in this dialogue. So we can actually start nesting dialogues into each other. So whenever I select this dialogue, it's going to show me the next dialogue options from that dialogue array. Now I'm going to head over back to our character and actually I'm going to give our character some variables. So first I'm going to give our character a name because obviously we want a person to have a name, right? Then after that, I'm going to add a romance level. 
this is just going to be an indicator uh, what the level of romance is at this point with the character. Then I'm going to give them a starting expression, essentially when the game starts, which expression is this character going to have. Then a starting blush, so same goes for the expression, whenever the game starts, which kind of blushing is this character doing. Then I want to add a dialogue, essentially whenever we start a conversation with this character, it is just going to load this dialogue. I will also be needing some references to the uh, clothing and facial expressions that we set up earlier. Then also in the character I'm going to give the variable some nice categories. And once I've done that, it is time to actually put some uh, default values for those uh, variables. P.S. I'm going to call my character Vanessa for this tutorial, because I just like the name, really. With the variable set, I need to do one more important thing. I'm going to bind the textures of the image layers to um, the actual structure that we made earlier. And because we set those default values of that structure, whenever we load this character, it will automatically load the values from that struct. And then we also want to expose all those variables to the editor. So whenever we go into our background now, we can just set the default values of this character per instance of background per level. As an example I changed their school uniform to something else and whenever we play the game now you can actually see it took the data from that background layer instead of our default character. So with that being done I actually want to make the character interaction. So I go back to the button of the character, make it a variable and then I want to expose the unclicked event to the event graph. In here I just want to tell the dialog manager that I still need to create that I'm going to interact and start a conversation with this character. In order to do this, let's actually create the dialog manager. We make a new blueprint of type HUD. This is a special type of blueprint in Unreal specifically designed for managing a heads up display. Let's also make another blueprint of type game mode, because in order for the HUD to be specified to a level, the level needs to be overridden by a game mode. In the dialog manager, let's create the actual function that we want to call. Let's make a new function named start dialog. For now, this dialog is only going to take a uh, character in as parameter. Make sure it's of our character type. And because we're going to use this character later on, I also want to promote this to a variable and rename it to uh, the current character because essentially it's just telling the system now, hey, we're going to start a dialog with this character. And then back in the character itself, I'm just going to grab the HUD from the uh, player controller. And then I cast it to my HUD, essentially the HUD dialog manager. And from there on, I just want to call the start dialog method. And as the input parameter, I'm just going to give it a reference to this character that's calling it. And in order to test this, I'm going to add a print at the end of the start dialog and just grab the name of the character and just see whether it actually prints the screen. Then the final thing we need to do is actually specify the game mode for this level as the game mode that we just created. And then to that game mode, we specify our HUD. Then we just play the game, press the character and see our name being displayed on screen. So cool, it works. 